Okay, so we're looking at reactions that we can use to make amines. And of course, you all know this reaction is one of the first mechanisms you come up with. If you can't remember, start digging around in that pile of topic booklets that you've got under your bed somewhere at home in a box covered in dust. Should be about 17 of them. Should they be in a folder? Because we all put them all well, again. They should be in a folder, yes. yes. Um, all right. So this is. What's the uh, what's the name for the type of mechanism? Yes, look at you. Yes. So yes. Very orange. Uh, yes, so first uh, method we've got of making amines is nucleophilic substitution of haloalkanes. Um, welcome back. Thank you. Um, where's, my, where's my arrow going to go? Here's the carbon. From? Uh, from Blimpair. From Blimpair. For the carbon. Any other arrows we would need? Uh, from the bond, from the C to the R, uh, like a C to the R. The C V R bond to the V R. That will give <coughs> us um, well, bromine is gone, but we'll now have. Because we've used the, the the lone pair of electrons on the ammonia, we'll now have we'll now have what? What will we have in the structure? Positive. Positive end. Positive. Positive end. Yeah, positive charge on the nitrogen because it's used one of its own private stash of electrons. What do we need to do to that reaction similar to the one that was in there? Test, how do we resolve that? Yeah, doesn't matter which one. We need to break one of those bonds and give the electrons to the nitrogen, and that will give us our final product. Welcome back. So nucleophilic substitution of haloalkanes. We will come back to this mechanism after we've done a bit of other stuff. Um, but we have some other methods here. The other methods all involve using hydrogen, hydrogenation. Um, which also gets called reduction because we're adding hydrogen. So if I take a if I take a nitrile, what's the name of that compound there? Hey, Rick and Josh. Count the carbons. No, just say it really carefully. Propane. Thank you. It's got an E in it. Well, two E's in it, but the important E's in the middle. Um, so if I add hydrogen to the hydrogen to that. Um, 
Nickel catalyst, uh, about 60 degrees. Is that right? No, high pressure and temperature. I'm completely wrong. High pressure and high temperature. 60 degrees of alkene, isn't it? Okay. So, just before we go on, notice the relationship between these two reactions that I've put on the board here. They both make an amine. We just go, go back a step. How, how can I make my propane nitrile? What could I make that from? Hey? Keep guessing. Ethane's a very unreactive molecule. You, you can't really make an awful lot out of ethane unless you shine UV light on it and leave it for a few weeks in the presence of some... Okay, bromoethane, which interestingly is on the board, isn't it? There it is. So if I take bromoethane and add cyanide to that, I'll make propane nitrile, and then if I reduce that or hydrogenate that, I'll make, what's that going to be called? That one? There's no nitrile in that molecule? Two ways of naming it. What else could we call it? Anyone? What else could we call it? Say it again. Okay. And over here we've got ethylamine, right? Or aminoethane. So we notice that the usefulness of the nitrile here. If I start off with my halo alkane and just add ammonia, I'll put on an NH2, but with the carbon chain having the same number of carbons. But if I add nitrile first and then I reduce it with hydrogen, I end up with an amine, but now I've added to the carbon chain. That's very useful. Like if you've got a if you've got a carbon chain, you just want to make it one more carbon long. There aren't, aren't many ways of doing that. Most reactions of you know ethanol makes ethanol makes ethanoic acid makes ethanoyl chloride. We're not we're not changing the number of carbons. Most reactions just change the functional group. So nitriles are a bit special in that it allows us synthetically. You know we're in the business of making new compounds making making drugs, whatever it is, pharmaceuticals, I mean, obviously. Um, uh, it allows us to add an extra carbon to the carbon chain. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions about any of that? The uh, other method I've got of... Um, Reducing nitriles is, and we, we came across this molecule, didn't we, earlier, lithium tetrahydroaluminate, used to be called. Everyone that I ever met called it lithium aluminium hydride. Sorry, it is called lithium tetrahydroaluminate 3, which is a bit of a mouthful. L-I-A-L-A-H-4, anyway, is the symbol. Um, if we do that and then... Chuck in a bit of dilute acid at the end of the reaction, that will have the same effect. That will add hydrogens to um, our amine. Sorry, add hydrogens to our nitrile making an amine. Oh, I've taught this before, honest.
And the last one is it's another reduction reaction, but this time turning uh, a nitro group into an amine on a benzene ring. Uh, sorry, the pens are running now. The um, reagents of tin and HCl, which might sound a bit strange, but if you think about it, if you drop tin into some HCl, it reacts and makes reacts and makes and hydrogen gas. So it's a way of it's a way of creating hydrogen on the fly sometimes called nascent hydrogen. Um, you're not expected to be able to balance redox reactions for organic chemistry, which is a, a bit of a blessing. So you don't have to work out, you know, how many electrons are gained and lost. So you don't have to do half equations. You, you could do it, it would work, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a brain ache to do it. So, um, what we do is we just say, right, we'll add some hydrogen and we put an H in square brackets to represent some hydrogen. But we still have to balance it. So, okay, so I've got, I've got two hydrogens there. But hang on, if we're balancing this properly, I've got to account for the oxygens there. What are the oxygens there going to become? Water. We always balance, in redox equations, we always balance oxygen with water, don't we? So that will be an extra four hydrogens there. So to balance it correctly, I need six hydrogens there. So without worrying about where those hydrogens come from, so we just say, and we put them in square brackets as if to say hydrogen of unknown origin, um, um, but we're still accounting for all the hydrogens. And that's it. That's how we make it. Yeah.